Hi there, and welcome to the show. I'm Robin Shukra, and we're back today at the Dancing Trousers Cookery School. It was such a fantastic success last time, we wanted to come back and see whether we could learn to cook another dish. I think I'm right in saying we're going to try and make moule marinière. I'm looking forward to it. Well, welcome everybody to Alexis's wonderful kitchen, which I'm really pleased to be back in, Alexis. Lovely nice to, to have see you back you. again. Um, now, I gather we're doing something which to me seems absolutely terrifying today, and we're looking at some mussels, is that right? Yes, I want you to show me your mussels. Now, okay. uh, the, the thing about <laughs> mussels is, I always say mussels is an open and shut case, and that's mm. a really good way to remember what you're looking for with them. And right. We've just got half a kilo here of lovely fresh mussels. Um, when you buy mussels, uh, as you start to prep them, a couple of things to remember. Before you cook mussels, they should be shut. Right. After you cook them, they should be open. Mm -hmm. And if they're the wrong way round, after either process, get rid of them. Right. So it's an open and shut case. Yeah, so indeed. here they are, nice and fresh. If you find any that have got broken shells, discard those as well. Right. So these are a little bit open, but sometimes they do that while they're being transported or while they're sitting with the fishmonger. And it doesn't mean it's a wrong one. Right. And all you have to do to see whether it's, whether it's safe to eat is just tap the shell firmly yeah. and slightly pressed together and if it then closes up and you can see can you see that one is now yeah. closing up that means it's okay it means it's still alive, it means it's it's still alive and yeah. it's good to yeah. go so what you're going to do to prep these is remove the beard which is the slightly hairy part that sticks out which they attach themselves to the ropes or whatever it is they've grown on with that right. and the easiest way to do that is to use the back of a small paring knife and simply grip the beard with your thumb and pull with the back of the knife. Importantly, the back of the knife. We're keeping you safe at all times. Right, okay. So um, you're pulling the beard off. The other thing, and I'll just show you, and then you yeah. can get cracking on the whole lot, is I like to clean barnacles off the mussels because it, they don't look very nice and no, it's right. nice to serve mussels in the shell I mean some of them may be out of the shell anyway and the, and the shell should be nice and clean now I managed to have bought you the cleanest mussels <laughs> in the United Kingdom because I can't actually find any barnacles but I'll show you what you would do we'll, we'll find a little cast on one of them I'm certain at some point come on mussels get, uh, hoof me up something so if you imagine, let's imagine there's a barnacle, all right. you would do is, again with your paring knife, which is the easiest thing to use for this, yeah. um, using the back of the knife again, you'd simply bash and the barnacle will come off. I see. So okay. that's going to be your rubbish bowl to put your bits and bobs of beards and barnacles into. Right, okay. go, sir. Well, I'll start this one that you closed up. So yeah, that's the Yeah, close and him I... up. Make sure he's closed up properly. Back of the knife. Back of the knife. On my thumb. Pull, quite, pull, pull quite firmly. Oh, that's yes, it. I see. Yes, and there we go. It, he's gone. Yeah, okay. and he can go into the sieve once you've right, done them. Brilliant. So there okay. we are. On and you go. when you say open, I mean, these are just fractionally Yeah, open. tap I... it, see whether it closes up. And if yes. it does, that's fine. If yeah. it doesn't, we'll say goodbye to it. If it does, and that seems fine. Yeah. Okay. And when you're keeping them, you should only ever keep them one day, maximum one day. So you buy right. them live from the fishmonger. Yeah. And the best way to store them is how I've done it here, which is a damp piece of kitchen roll in the bottom of the box. Right. A damp piece on top. Don't put them in water. Just put them on a damp cloth. And then the bottom part of your fridge. Yeah. But really, one day is absolute maximum. And the bottom part of the fridge is coldest? Bit, Slightly or is less cold. Oh, probably, I see. Okay. Um, because the fridge, theoretically, your fridge should be at about five degrees, but it'll be coldest right. at the top. And you're not, you don't want to freeze them. To you don't want to freeze them. them. No, yeah, absolutely, so you do not wish to freeze them. Okay. So here we go. So tap yeah, that one, and let's see whether that one closes up and push it slightly with your fingers. And if it does, he's good to go. Keep going. Is he going to close? Yeah, he's, he is beginning is he going, to close. Yeah, he's closing. I can see, there it's interesting. Go. He's waking up and, there we go. Saying, and he's actually, closed. I'm not going to have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. like it. Stop irritating yeah. me. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I see. So it's mainly, it's a test to make sure they're still alive, really. Yes, exactly so. Yeah. yeah. There we go. 
And we're making half a kilo because that's going to be perfect for you, me, Ross, to have a bit this morning. Right. Um, but this is a lovely dish to make for people at home and you would want for four people, you'd probably want a kilo and a half, I yes, would think. I see. Okay. And again, it's one of our one pot specials, so we only need to use one pan for this, which is lovely. Keeps the washing up to a minimum. Well, as I as I said in my intro to this, that the um, um, that is the, the point is to try and keep things simple yes. because yeah. it's it this is if it's going to be of interest to people, it's got to be people like me who have spent their entire lives failing to learn to cook. <laughs> it's a bit of an uphill struggle. Yeah. I don't know whether he's. Let's have a look. Not. You I do think. another one, and I'll, okay. I'll give him the the treatment. I think he I think he probably is. But if in doubt, throw it out is always yes. my motto. If you're even slightly anxious about it, yeah. don't do it. I think we're going to say no to him. He's not quite close. Well, I think that's uh, uh, that's it. And th this is in order to stop one poisoning oneself because yes. these things, w if they die in their shells, yes, you um, certainly don't want to be eating stop. a dead one. And you've got to be careful with seafood um, generally. It, yeah. You know, it, if you if you take chances with it, you will give yourself a, a nasty bit of food poisoning. But one shouldn't be frightened of cooking seafood. It's a lovely, it's a lovely thing to eat. It's also tremendously good for a you. Very, very good for um, you. Yeah. What we're cooking this morning has very little fat content in it. Um, you move on to the next one. If you think if you I'm think good. one's a wrong one, you can pass yeah, it to me for a. Okay, I I'll will give it a thorough <laughs> bashing. And uh, all right, well you might try that. Right, one too. Come I, on, I, I, I hate the idea of wasting. It. Definitely closing up. And once you've done one shellfish, really, it's it's pretty much the same. The scallops are different, obviously, because we shuck and those and oysters you would take completely out of the shell. Out of the shell. But a cockle would, would need much the same attention right. that you've given these. Okay. So they're all done. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so we can get rid of this. Now, we're going to prep the vegetables. I say vegetables. It's not a huge quantity that you need to do. But what we do want to put in here are our old friend garlic, which you right. know how to do because we've done this before, but I am going to remind you, right. don't okay. worry. Yeah. And we're also going to put a shallot in, one of these nice round shallots. And I don't know if you've tackled a shallot, Robin, but the skins on shallots are very tight. Yeah. So I'm going to show you two things to make it easier to get the, the skin off. And the first is put it in some hot water right and that yes. helps to slightly soften that skin and then I'll show you trick number two in a moment mm -hmm. um, the other thing that you're going to do is make your own bouquet garni for oh, flavoring right. now mm -hmm. you, when you buy it in the shops if you've ever bought it it's like herbs in a tea bag yeah. and you pop it into the stew or the whatever and it flavors it but actually if you have a few fresh herbs to hand you can make your own and I'm going to show you how to do that um, okay. so in fact we might start with that yeah. so I've got these out of the garden this morning we have got good old-fashioned curly parsley mm -hmm. a little bit of fresh thyme and a bay leaf yeah. Now, the interesting thing about parsley is that all the flavour is in the stalks. Really? Yes. The, 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 the curly leaves are very pretty for garnish and they have a little parsley flavour. But the workhorse of, of this is, is the stalks. But we're not going to waste a bit of it. We're going to use all of it. So your first job is, would you like to, with your chef's knife, just remove the stalks from the leaves and right. keep the stalks to one side. So they're just there. Yeah, so that's okay. perfect. Yeah. Right, so to make your bouquet garni, we're going to use the bay leaf as the method of wrapping it. You're going to get your parsley stalks and your thyme, and you're going to put the bay leaf around the outside, and then I've already cut you a little bit of string. I'm going to wind a bit of string around it and tie it, so that right, will make okay. a fresh bouquet garni. There this we are. looks to me like um, a nightmare for somebody with stubby great fingers. I'm like sure mine, you'll be nice fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Right, so I'll wrap it in the leaf yep wrap it in the leaf that's it doesn't have to be pretty because it's just about getting all the perhaps my 1960s background means that i ought to be able to roll this rather nicely maybe. i'm saying nothing <laughs> <laughs> that's it perfect there we go oh you're doing that very mm -hmm. dexterously right and just pull it tight don't need to do a knot that's fine just just pull it through there we go Done. Right. One bouquet garni done. Amazing. So when we're ready, we're just going to pop that in. Right. And then the rest of this we're going to use to garnish. So you're now going to chop this parsley finely. Right. And to do that, you squash it into a sort of a big old fat cigar. Mm. And then if you remember what we've learnt on, on our other lessons, which is we need to keep your fingertips tucked away to keep them safe. You're going right. to hold your knife by the bolster and then you're going to rock through, which you know yeah. because you've done it before, so I'm going to Absolutely. leave you to get okay. on with that. I will, I will do that very thing. Oh, look at that. Like a pro. 
Well, hardly that, but I, shall I Yeah, do and the go other through way? again, go through again, because the thing about parsley is it's, it's actually quite fibrous, and if you get a really big bit of it, it's not the nicest thing in the world. No. Now, what you could do here is what I call a pivot cut, right. which is hold your knife again, up by the bolster, rest your fingers on the top, and then just pivot through like that. Avoid right. doing that, which I see a lot of people do, because it means your fingers are getting awfully close to the danger zone. Just rest them on right. the top. Okay. And I shall get one of the famous dough scrapers while you're doing that to scoop your parsley up. I remember you introducing me to the dough scraper yes, last time I was here. I must here have yet to go out and buy one. I really must do that. Do you know, I'm, I might go mad and give you one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, you've earned it. That's what I was fishing for, really. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> That's brilliant, okay. That's lovely to get the aroma coming up. Yes, that's enough. Oh, one, one more time, one more time okay. for luck. There we go. That's it. That's looking good. So, dough scraper box. Let's get that lot into there. Right, okay. Oh, there's, a, there's a sharp end. Yes, I think there the rounded side is sort of beveled, which makes, which makes yeah. it easier. That's it. Spot on. Okay, now. We're going to do the garlic as per how you've done it previously, which is cut the blunt end off, bang it down with the flat blade of the knife to get the skin off, Right. slice finely, add a little bit of salt and then cream it together. Okay. Oh, doing great. Like that. That's it. And then slice. See, you've remembered all this stuff. This is well, really you good. Well, you know, it's uh, really good. the great joy about doing things on the telly is that you can actually then re-watch it. So I've been careful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to come back Very and be ill-prepared. <laughs> Very diligent. <laughs> there we go. Lovely. Is that so, fine enough? I would have I said don't, so. I'm not going to cream I would have said. Well, I, I think you probably could. Uh, just add a little bit, a little of, bit of, of sea salt. salt. Yep, that's fine. Not too much because the mussels will probably give us quite a lot of salt. That's right. fine. No, it's right that won't hurt at all. And, and then, then I now, it's just... fat part of your hand. So oh, right. that's it. That's it. And press and smear. Yep, lovely. That'll do. I got very, and looks fine. I got very carried away with this um, during while I've been away. Oh really? Uh, Have you been? And I made <laughs> I made a potato and garlic and cream dish, which I thought was going to be wonderful. And of course, I got so excited by the garlic, I did far too much. And it's an, it's a lesson worth learning that you can overdo. Garlic. You can, although you won't be troubled by werewolves. No, exactly. No. Right, <laughs> get your shallot out of the warm water because that's now right. had enough time that it should have loosened the skin a little bit. Now mm. here's trick number two, which also applies to onions, which is don't cut the top off straight away right. because people have a tendency to go right. I'll just remove that. That, and then it's oh, I'm trying to pick the skin off with my fingernail. Right. If you cut it through the middle, so you have half the root on either side, but leave I call it the hat. Yeah. Leave the hat intact. So that's right. your okay. first job. That's it. And now, because you've left the hat on, you've got something to get hold of. Yes. And you can sense. actually peel it much more easily. So again, right. that's, okay. that's your job. So You're this... doing all the work. That's it. Oh, look at that. You see, so much simpler, isn't it? It is. It makes all the difference. It there comes off go. a treat. It comes off a treat. Yeah, okay. Let's watch your rubbish bowl. Here it is. Thanks. Sorry, yeah. I know. That's it. Perfect job. Now I can't right. remember. Have we done how to finally die? So I'm not sure that we have. I don't think we have. I think right. This is a Here good is the point. moment then. Okie dokie. Right. Pop that in the rubbish Just bowl. There we go. So, what you are going to do, at this point, I'll do one half and then you can do the other, is okay, that okay? Yeah, of so at this point you can say goodbye to the hat because it's done its work. Right. And then what we're going to do is one horizontal cut, yeah. but three quarters of the way through only, because the root is going to hold the whole thing together, it's going to do all the work really, Right. and then we're going to do cuts all the way around the outside, just little cuts like this. I turn it halfway through because it's easier to cope with if you turn it. Mm -hmm. And then with that preparation done and tucking your fingertips away, at this point, when you start to cut through, you see that yeah. those pre-cuts mean you end up with lovely, finely diced shallot. And they should all, all the pieces will be the same size, which means they'll cook at the same rate. Right. So this does two jobs. Number one, it looks attractive because all the pieces are the same size, but it cooks at the same rate. So nothing will burn while yeah. something else is undercooked. When you get to the end and you're thinking, ha, quite near to my fingertips, just flop it over again onto yeah. its safe flat side 
and go through and finish it off. There we are. Look at that root. Did all the work Little for us. Chuck him away. Very, so very there we are. That's okay. yours there, Robin. You can do the second one. So I start by, by doing it. Take, that... the, take the hat off so we can actually oh, sorry, get... Yes. Yeah, no, that's right. it. There right. we go. It's done its job. Horizontal cut. Right. Three quarters of the way, mind your fingers. Like that. And that's it. And now right. around the outside, but without severing side. the root. Yes. So that's the root. So yes. I'm looking for to yes. small cuts. Yeah, small Am I doing cuts. it the wrong way around? Right, I so. I should be doing it that way, sorry. No, it's fine. I'm not going to do it, so I'm just going to no. show you. So you're really only using a couple of centimetres of the knife at the top. Right. And you're, you're coming through like so. But do make sure that the knife has made contact with the board because otherwise you're not severing the shallot and you'll end up with a fan at the I'm end of it. it. Yes, so, I see. Okay, so that goes right down there. That's it. No, I'm getting this all together. Lovely. Oops, I'm lost. That's it. So then turn it. Turn there it you go. Way. And now with your nice rocking chop, look at that. Look at that. Oh, he's a good pupil. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, you can keep the knife on the board as you chop. You just do yes. that. Yes. Yeah, I was lifting it. No, that's, that's all that right. I'm going to let you off because some... you did so well. <laughs> That will do us nicely. Okie dokie. So, you've prepped everything. This is a terribly simple dish. It right. has a few component parts. This is moule marinière and it's a classic French dish. Right. There are variations on a the theme, which people start putting all kinds of embellishments in, but I rather like the classic. So, so do I. ready That's to go. Right. Um, here's your pan. Right. Got some nice butter. Get your spatula ready. I will get you started on this and pop in a decent, a decent knob of butter. Right, something like that. Yep, that'll do well. Pop it in. And go. then if you would like to scoop up your, let's get these shallots onto your dough scraper and then you can just go straight into the pan once it's heated up. With a bit of skin, I'm just going to There's a bit of garlic in there That's fine, well. it can That's all go right. in at the same right. time. We're not going to worry too much about, not quite not yet. Just yet. Okay. Chef, when it's just, we'll just wait for that to, to heat through. And, uh, and then the other things that you've got are a bit of white wine. Good. Yes. Always and obviously good. your muscles. Right. While this is mm. heating up, run those under the cold tap, Chef, over there. Right. Okay. Just to wash off any any grit. I'll keep an eye on this. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. Rest them in there. And your shallots can go in. Butter's foaming, in they go. So a nice little bit of foaming butter. Yep, okay, there we go. In that lot goes. Preferably without the skin of it. Yep, and let's get the old spatula on those, get those moving around. Right. So I'm going to swap places. Already swap places. Yep. And all we want to do is just gently soften them and then the mussels are going to go in. Right, okay. What's the um, benefit of using a shallot rather than an um, onion? Just, just Slightly sweeter. Okay. Slightly less pungent, I think. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit sweeter. And then there are shallots of various different shapes. I've noticed sort yes, of um, banana shallots. But they call them it? banana shallots, the long ones, or escallion shallots. Right. And these are little round just These are little round shallots. shallots. But the, and the difference is not, there's no flavour difference made. But you just, know, I wouldn't know a flavour yeah, difference. Okay. I couldn't spot one. Right. Someone will no doubt let oh, us I'm know sure if there is. is. <laughs> right, this lot can go in. So right. tip the whole lot in all at one go. In they go. Right. And you can now hurl in your white wine. Right, so there's good. Yeah, so good the white wine. In it goes. And your beautiful homemade Number bouquet garni. garni can go in as well. I'm going to turn it up. So give that little turn round. Right. That's it. Oh, some good smells. That is, that that's smells very, wonderful. very good, very good indeed. Considering how simple that has been, that smell yeah. is fantastic. It's quite a complex smell. And then all we're waiting for is we want that to get up to a good simmer so that we're we're boiling away the alcohol so that we don't right. have a weird wine taste. We have the we have the flavour of the white wine but not well, the alcohol. Now the alcohol. That's a principle of all cooking with alcohol, isn't yes. it? You don't yeah. want the alcohol. You don't itself. want the alcohol, you want alcohol in that it. Often. Unless yes, it's okay. ice cream, in which case it stays. Oh well alcohol. then it's nice alcohol. Oh. Um <laughs> yes. Okay, so now we can see you've got a nice bit of a boil going on there. Give it one more turn round just right. to keep the, the muscles in contact with all the heat. I've given you a pan that's big enough that 
the mussels are covering the base of it. The more mussels, the wider the pan. I, oh, I right. like. Okay. I don't like the mussels to be stacked too high. I like them to right. be uh, as as widely spaced as they can so be. So we'll say preferably no more than two deep. So yeah. Uh, deep. That, yes. I, I think that's the word. Right. Now, okay. if you would like to pop the lid on. Yeah. Right. And we will give that probably maximum of five minutes, three to five minutes, and you can see the muscles are already opening. Yep. Um, so they're doing their thing, uh, but we'll come back and have a look at that in a couple of minutes' time. Brilliant, okay. Right, so we're back after, what, about three minutes? Right? About three so minutes. That's, that's uh, brilliant. Okay. And you've given the pan a bit of a shake, and yep. as you can see, all the muscles have now opened up. Yep. So we're going to add your final ingredients, which are a little bit of double cream. Right. Pop that in. And what have we got about sort of? About 50 ml. Oh, right. Not, not, okay. a huge, not a huge quantity. And um, you can give that a little, little stir around because we're doing a sort of a robin sized portion. Yes, so okay. we're not doing a, a, a vast quantity for right, right. many, many people. That's it. And then your beautifully chopped parsley can go in as well. It wouldn't be the same without my beautifully chopped It wouldn't parsley. indeed. <laughs> well, it just that little bit of colour does yeah. make it look very attractive. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, that comes, the smell of that is in Yeah, water. that comes lovely freshness. Yeah. Now, Perfect. your final job is, as I mentioned earlier on, I quite like to strain the broth, only because sometimes it can have bits of grit and sand that yeah. have come out from the mussels. You don't have to do this. We could get in and start eating that yeah, right now, but yeah. let, let's finesse it a little bit. Okay. So you are going to gently tip that lot. We hopefully will catch the mussels in the sieve. Tip the tip right. the whole lot out. Oh right, in yeah, yeah, mussels yeah, yeah, mussels included, and then we'll plate them up, make them look pretty. Come on, guys. There we go. Come on, fellas. There we go. Oh, oh it smells good. Doesn't it smell right. wonderful? It smells absolutely okay. wonderful. Okay, so. Here's our bowl. So into that, you can pop your lovely warm mussels, right. which won't burn you. You can just you can just, so just lift them. Lift them. Yes, why not? Because otherwise they'll clatter out in the terrible old racket. Yeah. There we go. See, that's the thing about cooking. You've got to kind of get your hands dirty. Yeah, yeah, I know. In. Well, you know, it's 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 um, interesting. And huh? look, there's well, your fantastic bouquet garni, which did a great together. job. Of course, it held together. You did that very well. <laughs> And well, some of the mussels yes. have come out of their shells, but we don't mind, it doesn't no, matter that's at fine. all. It also frees up a shell to use to Well, this is it. Dish, it provides its own cookery. Yeah, it's yeah, such yeah. a good dish, isn't it? I think that's a very good so, idea. So, right. what we'll do is, I'm going to have that little bit of shallot out. Would you then like to, because we've got just a couple of little bits of grit in there, the rest of this you can pour over the top. You can pour that straight over, over the top. The top yeah, there okay. we go. Was our delicious sauce. Absolutely wonderful. It looks perfect. There Shiny, we go. Wonderful. There we go. And yeah. I think the ideal thing to have this with is a bit of crusty bread. Right. So there's a little bit of bread there. Oh look, we've got some shallots left in the pan. So pop those oh, on right. the top. Waste not, want not. Stick them on. There we go. And that's it. More marinier. Fantastic. And Very simple. Incredibly simple. Very simple thing to do. Lovely thing to to make for people. Yeah. And there you go. Can't and really the most it. wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I'd, and just to go right back to the beginning again, you go, you look for a fishmonger who sells these things yep, fresh. fresh. Um, some of the supermarkets do. They do actually. They're, they're, they're very widely available yeah. now in those bags, um, in those those mesh and bags. And that little key thing is, this is a meal that has to be planned pretty much for that day. Yes, it's best not. It's to not a keeper. It but we, as I said, an open and shut case. So yeah, before exactly. you cook them, shut. Now that you've yeah. cooked them, open. open. So we know they're good and to go. Yeah. So come on, let's try one. Right, well, after let's you. Let's do it. Oh, Alex, very kind. Think, right, I'm going to have this fella here. Let's get one to have the fingers. So there we go. Yeah, excellent. Oh, delicious. Mmm, mmm. Is that good? Can yep, I borrow even that? that was cutlery. Yep. This is my. This is my. I've, mm. I've just watched people because I've had <laughs> such a spoiled life. I've, I've even written um, restaurant criticisms for magazines and things, and yet I've never learned to do it. And ah. it's an embarrassing thing. Well, so anyway, I've, now you I've have, never and you've done it perfectly. That. Might dip a bit of bread in, actually. That oh, is absolutely. This is good, Ross. You'll we'll like it. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Feel a bit sorry, Paul Ross. Just gets to watch. No, we feed him. Yeah. We feed him. Mm. Mm. Goodness me. Considering what time of the day it is, we won't let mm. on, but my goodness me, <laughs> it's surprising how delicious this tastes. Mm. Yeah. Very good. More marinier. Mm. Sorted. Perfect. Mm. Thank you very much, Lettuce. I can't think of anything nicer to have 
And hopefully we'll build us a nice little portfolio of dishes of this kind. Yeah. I think we will. Lovely dish to share. It's been very nice to see you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please go away and try this. It's fantastic. Mmm. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that. It was great fun for me. I now really can make moule marinière. Extraordinary. Now, if you'd like to visit us, please do so on cotswoldexplorer.co.uk and subscribe to our channel. Tweet us on at Cotswold Explore or find us on Facebook. And we'll be back soon. <laughs>